and a very happy hello on this wonderful Wednesday uh, here in May. What's the day? What is it? May 20th, 2020. May 20th. Oh, 5 2020. Okay. All right. I, I, I like it. So welcome to the PWBA podcast. My name is Emil Williams Jr. And as always, joined by Aaron A. A. Ron Smith. Uh, we've got a great guest today as we continue uh, our podcast run here. And uh, we will introduce her in just one second. But Aaron, how are things your way? And uh, I know uh, some, some there's some happenings going on in your neck of the woods in uh, DFW. Uh, what's going on in, in the Texas area? Well, we're uh, well, thank you. As always, for the kind introduction, we're doing well here. Uh, this Saturday is kind of a big day for us. Uh, we're starting to open up a few more places, and uh, one of those being bowling centers. So, um, you know, obviously that's going to be exciting for a lot of folks. I know there's a, definitely a great bowling community here in the DFW area. So I'm sure a lot of folks are looking forward to that. Uh, personally, I'm a little, a little excited. I was kind of getting back into my comeback when all this happened. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm, I'm eager as well. So I'm I'm just excited and once again excited for another uh, great guest here on the PWBA podcast. So we need to queue up the LL Cool J. Uh, oh. Don't call it a comeback. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I can't say the same. I, I, I thought about it, but Aaron actually was living it. Um, without further ado, let's get into uh, who we are here to talk to today. Uh, and that is Team Mexico member Sandra Gangora. Uh, 18 years running uh, on Team Mexico as well. Uh, obviously, a standout on the PWBA Tour. We'll talk about many of uh, her accolades, both internationally, certainly has made a couple of TV shows. Speaking of that, uh, some Stepladder Finals appearances. We will uh, introduce Sandra with a couple of clips from last year's PWBA Lincoln Open. Finals exclusively here on Bull TV. Ninth frame. There's one. <laughs> she had had some rough carry before that shot, so that was a, that was a well-deserved hit. She did. That was a lot of nine counts. Frame. Good shot. Wow. Ten back. She knew it, too. Two quality shots for a quality individual. Let us bring in today's guest on the PWBA podcast. Please welcome Sandra Gungora. How are you? Hola. Hi, everyone. I'm very, very excited to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. And obviously, um, just I want to know if, if how, how, how you guys are doing, if the family is good, hoping everyone is, is doing good at home. Um, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're, we're doing well. Also, uh, you know, I know how are things? Uh, are you in Monterey right now? Yeah, uh, I'm forced to be in Monterey right now. Uh, at this point, uh, we will we will want to be. I will want to be where you guys are uh, bowling the tour. But okay, uh, this is what we have. So yeah, I'm in, I am in my hometown in Monterey. Fair enough. Uh, we were we were supposed to, we we didn't do you any justice. Aaron and I were, should have responded with Como Estas. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jasmine, in the chat for for reminding us of. Uh, of uh, our lack of Spanish, but um, uh, SG, we appreciate you joining us. And um, obviously, you mentioned it. You're you're supposed to be uh, right now in the United States bowling on tour. Uh, obviously, we should be covering you in that in that light. So, how have you been staying busy uh, for the last couple of months since uh, you had to, you know, be in the house like everyone else? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I want to. Um, I always say this. Uh, it's been it's been a long time since I am not speaking the language. So. Please, you guys, bear with me. I'm doing my best. I, there is always a Spanish around around me, so I'm gonna do my best. Um, you got this. Yeah, Don't well, worry. Okay, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, well, I, I am very excited because uh, these these last two months, uh, because of the situation of, of being home, and and I'm I'm consider I consider myself someone that I always want to 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 get better and to help my family. So. I am. I actually have my my own business uh, that I'm uh, developing my own business uh, from home. Um, thanks to telecommunications and energy, uh, I'm working with some businessmen that I uh, that I, they are always um, wanting to help people to generate income from home. So um, I am doing that. You know, services like internet, uh, cellular phone. Uh, we can do. We can do, do. We can do that and provide people. Uh, these services. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that these days are not being so bad for me. Even though 
uh, I, I'd rather be bowling, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> And that is uh, something you posted on your Instagram story that you actually got to do yesterday. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I'm not fortunate to have those pair of lanes in my house. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my my very good friends, uh, Victor de la Garza, which they are watching. Hello. Uh, they they own these two pair of, of lanes in in their business, in their company. So they, they invited me and I was like... Uh, Okay, sure. So uh, I just took the car and I drove uh, 35 minutes. Um, obviously, I was wearing my mask and and the place was empty. They 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 have it by the, by themselves and they rent in the place with you know for some people that wanted to to bow. Uh, but we we took all the precautions and and obviously just to be bowling after two months. Uh, it was amazing. <laughs> it was a little funny. It was a little funny at the beginning because my first three shots were gutter. Uh oh. <laughs> um, uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and obviously I was blaming the oil the oil pattern. I wasn't blaming myself. That's right. Blame the lane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after after ten minutes, obviously I I got back to my to my feelings and I was striking. Um, it was just an amazing experience to be able to do it. So I'm thankful for, for those people that are able to bowl uh, because they own a pair of lanes or because they have a bowling center. So it was amazing. <laughs> well, with that, we got the clip queued up here. So we'll take a quick look at that. So this wasn't one of your first three shots. <laughs> after, after a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just like we are used to seeing right there. I mean, that was that was picture perfect. Yeah, to be honest, um, after so many, you know, two months of not bowling, even though I'm doing some stuff at home, mm -hmm. a drill, drills and stuff, um, you know, I've been working in my timing and stuff like that. So to be sincere, I was worried. I was worried that we were stopping bowling because I was working on things to get me better where I want to be. So um but yeah it took it took 10 minutes uh, i'm being very honest it took 10 minutes to catch up a little bit and then and then obviously because you know the way i throw the ball and 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 it's not i, I consider myself not very it's not a simple <laughs> simple way to do it <laughs> so so my grease was a little sore but uh but i've been i've been working out to to compensate obviously uh, the soreness. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, there's been a lot of players that they've all talked about uh, various drills that they've been doing at home. So what were some of the drills that, that you were uh, working on while you were at home? Yeah. Um, actually, my house is not, it's not very big. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't have, a, I don't have a long haul so I can construct or build uh, like a lane that mm -hmm. how other people are doing it's amazing how they are, are actually building something to to release the ball uh what i've been doing is i've been doing the the drills with one step approach so i can release the ball to the couch <laughs> probably the couch is already destroyed but uh, <laughs> you guys you guys don't get to see it <laughs> um and then uh, what I can do is I can walk my four step approach, but I don't get to release the ball. So I, I'm kind of trying to do both in, in two parts um, to stay to stay in rhythm, to stay uh, sharp. And and obviously, as you could see a couple of days ago, um, I, I I could ball. So obviously, uh, I, I, I I'm just continuing to, to do some exercises, some drills to to keep my hand and my body strong. So, so I, so I'm ready whenever I, I have to go. Fantastic. And, um, you know, we, we kind of talked about where we would be at in the season. And I believe today would have been the day after the Queens TV show for Emil. So for Emil and I, that would have been a day of relief, kind of, after a nice long <laughs> week. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously, you know, coming into the 2020 season, uh, what were kind of some of your goals and ambitions uh, looking ahead to uh, just another year on tour? Yeah, I guess um, obviously I can only speak for myself. So, uh, but I, I, I think we all share the goal that we want to win all the time. Uh, personally, I this is my goal every time I'm on the lanes. I want to win. Um, but, but as an important part of my of my personal, uh, let's say, goals is just to 
to to keep me there. Just I need to be where where the be, the be, the best bowlers are because one day uh, it will be my time, right? So if I continue to work hard, uh, if I if I'm there around the best bowlers, I get to learn a lot. There there is many things you guys probably don't know uh, about my country. Like we we really don't have. Um, the way to put those oil patterns. Uh, there are many things that sometimes I feel that I'm behind, but but being there and <clears throat> sorry, being there and being experiencing um, the field, you know, um, that's one of my goals. No matter the result, sometimes I just want to be there because I picked to be happy, and doing doing that makes me happy. <clears throat> that's a great answer. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's an excellent answer. Uh, I will I will follow that. Obviously, I know that many players, um, many fans, viewers, everyone uh, certainly always compliments you on your game and uh, just how physically talented certainly um, you are. And uh, I know it can be difficult when you think about expectations and you know you haven't won yet. So how do you manage the expectations and kind of what steps do you take to always make sure you you're putting yourself in the best uh, chance to to succeed? Well, I mean, if people think I'm talented, I'm always thankful, thankful for that. That motivates <laughs> me, you know? Uh, maybe sometimes I forget <laughs> that I'm talented. <laughs> uh, but no, I think, I think it's very, I mean, as I, as I say earlier, I think it motivates me to continue to, to work hard. Um, I, I, I live day by day. Whatever I have in front of me, I try to cover whatever is in my hands to get better. Um, I know in in my head I know I haven't won any title, but uh, but as again if I'm there, like if I keep pushing and I keep working hard, I'm I'm confident that one day it will be my time. I've been close, I've been close to win a uh, couple times, uh, but uh, but if I keep trying, if I just keep being there, finding obviously finding uh, my way together because obviously you guys don't know. Um, sometimes we don't have support and and my family doesn't have a lot of money and uh, I'm always trying to get sponsors and, and the help uh, from people here at home. Um, I say hello to my Mexican sponsors because without them I wouldn't be able to be on tour you guys uh, and, and I know people don't know these people think I'm rich <laughs> because I'm everywhere uh, but I don't I don't have the, the money so I value when I'm there. Um, as, I, as I say, whatever the result is, I'm doing my best to be there, and 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 I'm just gonna keep working hard for for those people that wanted me to win, and obviously for for myself. You know, this is a dream come true just to to be there uh, to bowl with the best. So, pretty much. <laughs> Well, we certainly certainly value seeing you each and every week out there, and uh, we, we definitely ex expect you to be in the winner's circle uh, sometime soon when we're back out there. Um, you know, kind of, you, you mentioned the support of your family, and this past Mother's Day, Emil did a uh, very cool project on the PWBA social media channels, uh, allowing many of the athletes to uh, just give their wishes to uh, their mothers for all their help and support over the years. So, Emil, I kind of want to throw that question to you because uh, I know you had a specific question for Sandra. Well, I did, and I, I talked to her about it a little bit um, beforehand or when she sent me the video, but I just noticed, you know, you, you talked about your mom and um, her own aspirations and dreams at one point to kind of bowl professionally. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious on what she has meant to you and you know, and, and being able to kind of live this dream with her uh, as well on tour. Of course, I, I'm hoping I don't get too emotional here talking about my It's mom. okay, I'm it's gonna, okay. I, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, well, yeah, actually many people, many people don't know that my mom used to be in Team Mexico a long time ago. She was amazing. She's a natural lefty. Uh, she, she used to compete uh, representing our country around the world. So when I was very little, I just knew that my mom was doing something, right? Because my mom was traveling around the world and I just <laughs> wanted to do, I wanted to do the same, but I wasn't, sh I, I wasn't aware of what she was doing because I was only four, five years old. So once I was growing up, I, I started to be around, ar around them in the bowling center and I, and I comprehend what, what was the sport about. So, uh, I don't remember this, but they tell me that I used to wait my turn. 
I was holding a six pound bowling ball, in, uh, you know, with, in my knees, and I was just waiting for them to let me ball. So since very little, I got in love with the sport, but this is thanks to my, to my mom and my dad, because if, if they wouldn't be bowlers, you guys, I wouldn't be here today with you talking. And I'm just, I'm just very, very uh, thankful for, for her, for having her as, a, as my mother. Uh, I want to say hello to her, but she doesn't understand a word of English. Uh, but, uh, but she's been my inspiration. She, I know she only, I know that she wanted to try to bowl the tour, but then she had me. So I, pr I pretty much was the reason that maybe she didn't try. Um, you know that um, it, things are difficult sometimes to travel uh, from home, from Mexico to United States, and and with a baby. I, I think it was just difficult for her to, to, to do it. So I made a promise to, to her that I'm going to do it for the both of us. It's okay. So no matter the result, no matter if, if I win or not, I'm just going to do it for the both of us. I felt that. Mm -hmm. I, I really did. And, uh, Brings me back to to my dad. It's it's not Father's Day, although I'm anxiously awaiting that opportunity. Um, but my dad got me started uh, in the sport, and I you know I still I am obviously not a professional, but I still have the the belief in my head that at some point I will want to win something with a professional tag on it that I can kind of dedicate to him as well. So I, I definitely feel you. I think the the audience feels you, and uh, we appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. I want to take this moment to uh, let everybody know you're watching on Bowl TV, uh, the PWA Facebook page, and the Sport of Bowling YouTube page. We got some hellos. Uh, Jazz Real Tan says hello, by the way. Uh, it's Andra. Hello, Jesse. Yes, thanks. Uh, I, I said I last night. <laughs> I said last night that I wouldn't call her Jazz Real anymore, and I just did. Uh, so, hi, Jazzy. Uh, Chuck Gardner is, is watching a little bit. Chuck, how are you? See, Albert, uh, Mr. Smith is in the building, or Mrs. Smith. Uh, sorry about that, Aaron. Uh, hi, hi, Mrs. Smith. That's Aaron's mom checking in. Uh, Chris Pulliam, Andrew, Jasmine. Uh, we got a lot of great individuals, so we appreciate that. Uh, if you have questions for Sandra, please drop them uh, in the respective uh, in, uh, platforms that you are watching on. We'll try to get those answered for you um, as well. Aaron? Uh, continuing on in the theme of, you know, you talked about how important your sponsors are to you and uh, kind of helping you live your dream. Uh, and I know for Team Mexico uh, at the past World Championship, uh, you guys kind of had to go out on your own to basically get to the event in Las Vegas. And then you get there, win a few medals. Uh, but just kind of talk about the process of doing that and how important it was for you uh, and the team to make the trip to the World Championships. Yeah, actually, uh, this was the first time that we had to pretty much to work for uh, the, the budget. Um, we always had the support uh, for, you know, federation and, and committee, but that, that, that last year was difficult for every sport um, in my country. So we got notified that we were not going to be taken. And you know me. I mean, people that know me knows that I'm not going to just cross my arms and do nothing. <laughs> so I, I started to motivate my teammates uh, with, with the help with my coach, Julio. Uh, we we were planning. We were thinking, what what can we do? So I started to to do some raffles in the centers. I was showing up every single night uh, for those leagues and uh, playing a game. You know, like this. Um, how do you call this game? Um, master um, mysterious game. So you draw you draw the the numbers and then if someone just shoots that. Oh game, yeah, the mystery money. score. Right. Yep. The mystery score. Yes. So I was doing that every single night uh, for for three weeks um, and saying hello to everyone and just being there with them. And, and, and obviously people started to respond very positive. Um, also, we contacted some companies, some people that wanted to, to give a, a, a considered amount. So we started to collect the money by the effort uh, of doing it, but also for the help of many, many people. Um, I also talked to, to Rob Gatchel uh, at that moment. Uh, I say hello, he's watching. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I told him that 
if if I could have some support. Uh, so he shipped, uh, he, he he sent some bowling balls that I was doing raffles for it. Uh, so we could collect more, collect more money so we could show up to the world. Um, I don't want to make this story so long, you guys, but it's okay. many people, many people help us to, to collect the money. Um, every teammate in their states, they were doing the same thing. Uh, we were communicating every day. How, how, were, how are we doing with this, with that? Uh, we planned it and we made it happen. And, and that was because of people really helping us. So people, if, the, if you guys are watching, gracias por ese apoyo. Thank you for that support uh, because it meant the world. Uh, we had the opportunity to show, to show up and we got two medals that that happened because we, we actually show up to ball and we, and we, we just are very thankful. And we got uh, some of the photos from that, so we'll pop those up on the screen. But uh, obviously, the team event uh, is the one that everybody looks forward to. And uh, in doing a little research at the World Championships, I believe it had been since 1971, the last time Mexico had medaled in the team event. Uh, so just what did it mean, you know, all the all the hard work to get there and then uh, to end up with a couple of medals? You medaled in trios as well. Uh, but that team event was something else. Uh, talk us through that and that experience. Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, we we never been um, close to the top three for so many years. We were finishing maybe eight or 12th place, but we were never very um, kind of like, I don't want to say that we were not prepared because we are always prepared, but I think we, we were not doing maybe the, the right thing as a team to, to get us there. So this situation that we faced because of the support we didn't have and we kind of i think we we got each other very close like we were trusting each other because thanks to many people and thanks for our work we were there so we took advantage of of whatever we had uh that day and and we 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 were able to match up the lanes um personally um i didn't start very good the first two days so they probably were were uh thinking what what where is she you know like she's just lost like she she doesn't she doesn't know how to get the ball to work so we made a, a few adjustments i changed a bowling ball and and in the trios event in the morning i promised myself that it was going to be a great day no matter what so we started to 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 bowl good um uh, personally i could help the team because of the change of the ball, which was the chaos, uh, chaos from C uh, C three hundred. I love the ball. I will, I will die with that ball uh, when, <laughs> when, when that ball just don't go with me. <laughs> um, so this situation helped us uh, to. In personally, I could help my team. They were bowling good, so I needed to do something, and uh, everything started to work, uh, to work out for us. We found the lane. We were communicating. As I said, uh, the, situ the situation previous the worlds uh, put us very close together. We were trusting each other, and, and yeah, um, we were we were around the best in the world. And 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 and, and I know the, the medal was a bronze. It felt like gold, you guys, because we were never that close. And I know that if we continue to work hard as a team, uh, we can we can show up again, and, and we can and we can do great things together. Absolutely. And uh, since we got the photo up there, uh, I know not everybody knows your teammates. So would you uh, do us the honor of uh, introducing all of them on the screen uh, just so everyone knows uh, your great teammates? We we've become familiar with them uh, just through keeping track of international events. But uh, for the folks at home, who we got up here? Yeah, starting from left to right, we have Adriana Perez. She's from Chihuahua. Well, from, from Juarez, Chihuahua. She's very close to El Paso, Texas. Um, and then, well, you have me. Uh, and then Aceret <laughs> Seter. Um, she, she's from Jalisco, from Guadalajara. And she's been bowling a couple tournaments last mm -hmm. year. She, she throws it amazing. She's an amazing bowler. And she was planning to bowl this year uh, on tour. And then when, every, when this happened, she's like, what? I was finally going to go out on tour, and now we don't have a tour because of the situation. But yeah, she's she's wanting to try also to be around us. 
Uh, and then we have Ileana Lomeli. She's from Mexico City. I know her since we were uh, 14 years old. And actually, my first gold medal in the Youth World Championship was with Ileana in 2004 in Guam. Um, we got a gold medal for the first time. I was only 17 years old. Uh, so I was very, very excited. And then we have Paola Limon. Um, the very tiny one, Paola, uh, she's, she's, she's a younger on the team. This was her first world championship and she did amazing. Uh, she bowled amazing on trios and on the team. Um, and I think this, this will motivate her to continue to work hard because she knows that she's capable to be around the best in the world. And I'm trying to convince her to, to, to go on tour with us so she can so she can experience what we love the most, you know, on tour. And then the last one, you know, it's Lily Robles. She's on tour. Uh, mm -hmm. She both, she also uh, travels with me a couple of mm -hmm. times. Uh, and she she has two babies. Well, no babies anymore. One is, I think, five and the other one is ten. Uh, and she loves to bowl all, always, uh, obviously. And and they they all of them are amazing amazing people i i love them uh, even though we're all so different and sometimes we we don't fight but let's say sometimes we don't we don't get uh in the same in the same page but uh but we love each other because we are third in the world so i i just i'm hoping they're doing okay and their family i'm doing it and they're doing okay too well, thank you for that. That was an awesome introduction. And uh, as you mentioned, some talented players. I know uh, Azaret was at the Pan Am Games this year. I believe she medaled in the singles event, right? Correct. Azaret and Ileana, they were the ones winning a medal in doubles. In doubles too, <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. And, and both got uh, uh, singles uh, medals, bronze and, and, and silver. Very awesome. Very awesome. That's a really good year, obviously for for any any squad. But considering what you guys had to go through, uh, it, I mean, it just makes it even more refreshing to hear how much success Team Mexico did end up having uh, in twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, no, we we were just very happy to to experience. We didn't want to miss the chance to go to to the World Championship, and and as as you say, the the fact that we did it, we we worked for it, uh, makes it more. Uh, more beautiful for us, I guess. I, I agree. I think um, there's there's a ton of fans uh, of of yours already watching, but I think you probably are gaining more fans, uh, considering <laughs> all that you put into it. And, I, and I'm I'm being very serious. Uh, I'm gonna pause a little bit just to take a couple questions um, from our uh, viewers watching wherever they may be, may be watching from hope everyone is staying safe mm -hmm. um mark's question i want to make sure i get it right but he asks are you planning to do any of your design work uh for your pwba career and or branding so i, I imagine are you going to use or have you used kind of your design skills to to uh in some in some way with uh branding yourself as an athlete of course maybe some of your designs appear on your jerseys for example yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's it's on top of my head. I I actually uh, designed my own jerseys. You guys, the jerseys that you see that I'm wearing on tour, uh, I create them. Uh, obviously, the the companies that do the the, the jerseys uh, uh, help me uh, have them. You know, so I can so I can I can wear them. And this year, I was I um, I have new designs, but obviously, I haven't shown them because they're actually stuck in in the border because oh. we cannot ship we cannot ship them uh, to to my house but i already have them um i'm very excited so we, so you guys uh, can see the new designs but yeah I'm, I'm i'm planning on it i haven't shared it with the world but i'm planning to have a a brand uh to 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 show to share my designs very soon but Sorry, I cannot say more <laughs> because uh, <laughs> because uh, I, I I am working on it. But yeah, the question is sure. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And uh, Mark, if you're still watching, let me know if uh, if I didn't ask the question properly. Just just drop me a note in the chat. Uh, next question comes from Michael. What tournament and or bowling center is your favorite to bowl in? So I guess that could be on tour. That could be in history. What's your favorite tournament and or bowling center? Ah, uh, that's a very tough question because 
uh, well, the question is, it's just hard to answer because we, we have been bowling so <laughs> many. Uh, and I can mention that uh, if, if I talk about the tour, I love Lincoln <laughs> because that's when I've been bowling the best. I wish all the tournaments were in that center. <laughs> I think I think John um, Lucido would be okay with that too. <laughs> yeah, and actually, actually, I, I say hello to him. Uh, he is a great host, and and he always does 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 the, does the best for us when we're there. And actually, I had a chance to choose uh, to shoot three hundred couple years ago and i actually won uh, a check an extra check that he was offering oh, for, yeah, for us mm -hmm. to, to motivate us and and obviously um i just love the center it's a very cool center and 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 the host and and he's he's amazing uh, if i talk about um another place i mean i love to ball in las vegas you know the the arenas are amazing it's just you feel so little when you're bowling there but uh but it's it's amazing because you guys we don't have anything like here like that at home so i just enjoy to experience any place around the world uh, because they're just different from home and if you've been watching uh the podcast from the from the very beginning or at least this episode the first two shots so the clip that we showed at the top of the broadcast was at uh, sun valley lanes in lincoln which is where sandra is talking about <laughs> so and she struck on both of those shots obviously so uh, uh next question comes from uh chris pulliam uh chris asks if the pwba held a doubles event who would you choose as your doubles partner it's a good question I think I know the answer. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, if I could choose, I would bowl with Jason Belmonte, right? <laughs> because he's the best bowler in the world. Um, but I, I've been bowling these tournaments, you know, the Lucy, uh, a couple years ago, and I've been bowling with uh, Josh Blanchard. Uh, I didn't help that, that tournament. I, I didn't bowl very good. Uh, but... Uh, I mean, many people, many many of the bowlers are great. I I I admire uh, Amleto Molacelli uh, because of because he's Latin, right? And 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 I would want to bowl with him. Uh, but I think it will be amazing to bowl with Norm Duke. You know, um, all these people that I admire because they're just great bowlers. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> one of them <laughs> what if what if it was a pwba only so it was a it was a pwba only doubles event who would you choose ah you guys sorry i messed up no it's okay oh, no that was, that was a really good answer though <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you guys be be patient with me because my english is just uh everywhere uh if he if he was to bowl with with a girl from the pb oh mm -hmm. i would pick liz johnson i am a huge fan i respect her because of her career and because how she is um i think i would want to bowl with her how about that i'm not gonna lie i did not expect you to say liz johnson yeah i know i mean obviously i would want to go with clara because she's okay like, all right awesome, <laughs> awesome friend <laughs> but but i will say just for the fact that I admire Liz Johnson. It would be amazing to bowl with her in a tournament, you know. So, I, I would also choose Liz Johnson as well. So, <laughs> nice, nice job. Uh, we'll get to one more, and then we'll save uh, a few more for the end of the show. Um, Jasmine asks, "How many? Uh, well, how many Starbucks cups do you have? And uh, what's what's your go-to <laughs> Starbucks order?" I, I wish you guys, I mean, I don't want to mess up the camera, but I just have all my connection, but my collection um, um, on the side of me. Oh, uh, let's let's I see have it. A, okay. So, yeah, let's give it a try. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to turn this to this side. There we go. So, and obviously they're more, on, <laughs> they're more in the bottom, right? Wow. So, yeah, that's, that's serious. Yeah, and, and I and I also have, um, I also have uh, some in the kitchen, the ones that I I use, right, like to to, to drink the coffee. So I will say around 50, 50 something. 
Um, I try to collect them every place I go in the United States and also in, in around the, the country, running around the world. Like every country I visit, I buy the, the cup. And what would be my coffee? I love um, cappuccino and I would just ask, uh, can I have a grande cappuccino with skim milk, one splenda in the bottom, uh, extra hot. And sometimes I would say that I wanna matcha green tea latte with skim milk. I don't know, I mean, those are my favorite drinks from Starbucks. <laughs> I'm gonna try one. I, I just wrote down the first one. <laughs> Cause that's the thing with Starbucks for me, like there's just so many options and like I, I'm a simple person. So I need the simplest order that I can possibly have, but you sum that up pretty good. So I might have to, might have to try the, yeah. the, the cappuccino with the skim milk and one, one Splenda. I like Splenda too. One so that, Splenda, that but just say it, say it in the bottom because in the if bottom, they put okay. it on top, yeah, if they put it on top, it just stays in the foam. And you don't want that. You want it in the bottom. <laughs> See, that's an experienced uh, coffee drinker right there. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, Aaron, sure. what do you got? Oh, that was fantastic. Thank <laughs> you, everyone, for the uh, questions in the chats. Uh, you know, and this is going to kind of go off one of the questions uh, that was asked by one of the fans. But uh, we talked about favorite bowling centers. But uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, getting to see your mom uh, with her being able to travel the world for uh, and bowl, and you've had that opportunity now for many years as well. Uh, what's been kind of the favorite place for you to travel to bowl? Well, that's a that's an, an awesome question because we have been in, in a lot of places. But if if I want to pick, I will say Japan. In a um, couple of years ago, I visit uh, the biggest center I have been. I took mm -hmm. a picture in the last lane, it was 156, you guys. Wow. So this center has three levels, because imagine if you're bowling a tournament and then you have to finish 156 and go to lane one, right? <laughs> that that would mm -hmm. you will have to rent a car to go, <laughs> um, to go to the other. But even though 50, 52 lanes every, um, every floor, it's a huge place. And I don't know if this is the, the biggest place in the world, but it's been the biggest place I've been. So I I was amazed. We were doing a demo with Columbia 300, so I got to visit many centers in Japan. And I just love, I love Japanese people. I love their very caring. I love their culture, their food. I love um, the cities. So that would be my, my best place. <laughs> Wow. Very One, awesome. 156. You, Emil, do you think yeah. you could go from... <laughs> wow. That would be a tough uh, ball caddy responsibility. Imagine imagine those Fridays when we have to move <laughs> all your equipment and then you finish in the last pair and go to the lane one. No, oh, that, yeah, that's, that's just never, <laughs> that, that, never uh, happening. <laughs> absolutely. I'm also thinking about, you know, how we would set up, set that up for, uh, to live stream it, like, there's not oh, enough cameras oh, right there. Like oh, we'd no. we'd have to get there like three weeks ahead of time. <laughs> that, just, <laughs> that would be incredible. That's correct. Enough. Don't scare me like that, Emil. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I, that's that is nightmarish. My apologies. I do hope to visit it, though one day because that's that's a pretty you don't see that every day. So that that would be something I'd like to kind of cross off a bucket list, if you will. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know. Continuing on your career as a uh, as a standout for uh, Team Mexico, I, I know there was a photo posted not too long ago uh, that we shared on the PWBA of you, I believe, from 1997 winning 15 medals. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring that up. But I know Emil had a follow up. To yeah, that. Uh, yeah. We'll wait for the for the clip. But um, I was so so curious. So it was the 1997 Mexican Youth Championships. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was our our um, every year. Uh, the youth obviously uh, have these tryouts as well for for little for little people. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, when you are 15, 16 years old, then you can you can be on the team to represent the country. But the first, the, let's say the the first category is the the one that you are nine to eleven years old. The very first, the very little ones that are bowling. So um, these medals, 
I wasn't I wasn't aware. I think that I was gonna that I was capable to win 15 medals, but um, I had a funny story before telling you about how 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 I got them. Um, when I was 11, uh, this was my my last year of of that division. I was gonna go to the 12 years old one. So I remember I was bowling and I was winning and I was and, and I was bowling good. And uh, when I finished the tournament, my mom got asked for other associations to show my passport because hmm. they didn't they didn't they didn't believe you believe they didn't <laughs> believe I was eleven I was bowling I was bowling so good for my age that they thought that I that I was that I was older <laughs> because the, the average that I had for that category was higher from the oldest ones the older ones so. I don't know. I just think that's 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 funny, <laughs> you know, if people are asking you if you really are eleven. <laughs> so I was doing something right, right? I mean, oh I yeah, that's right. <laughs> Clearly. So yeah, well, <laughs> these medals, uh, maybe at that moment, they they didn't. I was feeling happy because I had fifty medals. But right now, 30, 34 years old, it's when I when I realized what I what I actually did when I was little. Because when you're 11, you're just are getting excited because you're you're giving a medal. They're they're giving you a medal, but you didn't really don't value many things, right? I mean, you're little, and and I and I just realized that hey, I got 15 medals and I love to win. I wanted to win every time, so that motivated me when I was 11. I wanted to be better every year, so I started to bowl all these tournaments year by year by year until I until I became a um, member of the Team Mexico for Youth. And then obviously I had the opportunity to, to win a gold medal in one of the Youth World Championships. But 15 medals possible for a tournament, uh, <laughs> every, every, every event, um, we ball, you know, singles, doubles, trios, uh, or the team. And so you, I didn't leave any medal behind. I took them all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, when I saw that uh, that post a few weeks back or a couple months ago, I was like, 15 medals? Like, I don't care what competition it is. Like, that number is outstanding. I mean, that's just, like, especially to be that young. So I, I, I like that you knew early, like, hey, I'm, I'm coming in here and I'm, I'm winning them all. Like, <laughs> and, and actually, actually, if I know – in the in the in the screen it's very it's very hard to read and mm -hmm. obviously it's in spanish but the the reporter is asking me what would you do without bowling how how is how would your life be without bowling and i was 11 years old and i in my answer was just one word boring perfect so uh, <laughs> obviously that's exactly how i feel <laughs> uh, many years after, uh, I, will, I, I think my life will be boring if I wasn't a bowler and I wasn't doing what I love the most. <laughs> I think that was the only answer you needed in that situation because I think all of us feel the exact same way. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so we we had a, we mentioned Claire a little bit earlier. So we had Claire on, of course, early in the week on Monday on the podcast and I know you guys travel uh, when you're on tour together and uh, our roommates very good friends of course so if you would mind to share a couple of uh, travel stories that that you can share <laughs> um, of when during your times and, and time spent with Clara oh boy <laughs> we, we have we have so many good memories um, first of all I want to say that you know I mean you know Clara mm -hmm. and people know Clara she's such great friend i love her with my heart uh if it wasn't for her uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't probably be able to to stay you know with you guys on tour because she helps me every time we are on tour um between stops i come back to her house she's a great friend um i really value her friendship um and and and, and what she is i mean she's a great bowler and and obviously to be around her it just inspires me to to be good too, to, to be great, you know? Um, but if I can share some memories, I mean, um, we have so many. Obviously, 
before bowling, we have to go to Starbucks to get our coffee. That's for sure. Of course. <laughs> um, be, between between squats, we want to go to Chipotle to eat uh, to eat in Chipotle. You know. Uh, so we we are very similar in some in so many probably routines that like we adjust each other. Um, obviously, when when bowling is not going good, sometimes uh, we're quiet for a little bit. Uh, but we share we share the sport. We share our friendship and, and we just get along and I just appreciate what she does uh, for me as a friend. Uh, I learned a lot. I always learned something with, with her uh, about the lanes, about bowling balls, about everything. She's a, she's a true, a truly uh, a friend for me. And, and, and if I think about something right now, I'm just thinking some story, funny story. So last year, uh, the first stop was in Cleveland, correct? So, yes. Uh, so we arrived, we met in the airport, we took the car, I start driving. I am always singing, so she sometimes records me because <laughs> she thinks that I'm just too funny. <laughs> so I'm singing, and, and then we arrived to the, we, we rented a house. Um, so we arrived, and the, the house, I mean, it was beautiful inside, but it was in an ugly neighborhood, ugly. And we are like, should we stay here? Like, should we go to a hotel? And then, and then I said, well, let's, let's try. You know, let's just get in. Let's try. I mean, we're already here. So we entered the house. The house was beautiful inside, very tiny house. Everyone had the room, uh, the kitchen, everything very nice. So... At night, I say, okay, good night, I'm gonna go to bed. So when I started just to close my eyes and I was just ready for the rest, I started to, 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 um, to listen to some noises on the floor. And I'm like, uh -oh. <laughs> is, that a, is that a mouse? Like, I just didn't know, it was an animal. It was sounding like something or maybe like a, like a spider, I don't know. So. I, I jumped out of bed and turned on the light and I look and it was nothing there. But I found out that the house has a little, had a little plate underneath the table, uh, the table night, night table. Uh, so I'm like, that looks like it's food. Like, I don't know what it is. Anyways, I went back to, to sleep or to close my eyes, uh, turned the, the lights off, went back to sleep. And in the middle of the night, I woke up. I never wake up, you guys. I never wake up for anything. Like I really sleep good. Well, another another noise. Like if something was eating those little things, right? So I run out and I'm knocking on door, on Clara's door and I'm like, "Can you please come to my room? Like there is something in there. Like there is nothing I can do." And then she starts laughing because obviously now it's not funny, guys. <laughs> but when I'm doing it, when I'm doing it, like she's like laughing at me, but she's like, you're like a little baby. Like there is nothing in there. And I'm like, no, I promise there is a mouse or something in there. Anyways, I end up sleeping on the on the other uh, on the other room that we had. And obviously no mouse there. So I I slept good and everything went good. But those are just. A, fun, a silly story that I experienced with her. She thought I was crazy because there is nothing in there. And I'm like, I promise I'm telling you. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, so, but, so yeah. did, did we ever find out? Was there, was there ever something there? Well, um, no, I never found something. I never found something on the, on the, on the room. Um, but, uh, you know, I, there was I, something I, there though. <laughs> It was something eating at that plate there, but nobody, <laughs> obviously she didn't believe me. <laughs> that's that's uh, wow. So silly. Uh, so that's silly. kind of scary on both notes, though. The fact that she didn't believe you, which you know, like that's a sign of a good friend. Because I feel like I would have done the same thing, <laughs> uh, but then clearly you know there's something there. So like, uh, okay, like I'm not I'm not crazy. I'm not tripping. That's uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Now I have yeah. to, I have to ask since you brought it up and Emil is I've traveled with Emil a lot so uh, we end up going to a lot of the same restaurants as well after we finish a day on Bull TV and uh, Emil too is a uh, connoisseur of Chipotle so I want very, to know, very much so yeah I would like to know 
or if both of you could just tell your orders to see how close we are here. <laughs> okay. What's the go-to right. order? Uh, yeah. Should, should you start, Emil? I'll, I'll go first. Um, okay. I, I used to be a straight bowl person, so burrito bowl, but my wife has kind of got me more into uh, a, a salad, per se. So I'll get a salad now with uh, half chicken, half steak, um, mild salsa, corn, um, cheese and lettuce, maybe some pinto, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Um, <laughs> I don't need any vinaigrette though. I'm, I, don't, I don't need the vinaigrette. I'm good. That's that's generally my. I might switch up one of the meats, one of the proteins. I might throw some carnitas in there. Uh, I I do enjoy carnitas. So that that is my typical chipotle order. Typically. Yeah, I'm hungry already. <laughs> I, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go after this now. <laughs> Yeah, you're lucky you can you can get it. Um, That's fair. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm I'm in Mexico and and we can make it happen close to right. it. But when you when you're traveling, um, well, as as Latins, you know, Clara and I were traveling, and uh, that's that's what we want to eat because it's similar of our own food, you know. So I put in the plate uh, white rice, black beans, barbacoa. I love barbacoa mm. in Chipotle. Mm -hmm. And then I will put um, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of lettuce, uh, and a lot of hot sauce. Um, <laughs> the red one, like <laughs> yeah. yeah that's and hot. then you mix, and and then you mix it, and it just stays delicious after bowling a game. So obviously, uh, that's that's a good play for energy to come back to keep bowling. Uh, and sometimes, even though if we are not bowling. Uh, we will we we will stop sometimes just to to get some some chipotle. But when we are when we're in the, when I'm in the United States with her, we we cook right. We cook at her house and we do uh, some Mexican or Colombian and and it's just very very fun to be around her. That's a good question, Aaron Smith. Now I've got to ask uh, Miss Gangora now about just straight authentic tacos because I know at the end of the day when you're at home, like. You're going to get an authentic taco. So if we were in Monterey, where would we go to get uh, some some authentic tacos? We have so many, many places, very good places. Uh, on top of my hair, uh, head, there um, there are the ones in the corner, the ones on the street sometimes are the best. And I know you might think, Oh, that, that could be dangerous, right? Because they're, no. they're just in the corner. That's where you they're, go. They're in the <laughs> but, uh, but many, many places uh, have just uh, the, the typical. Uh, the typical taco, obviously, homemade tortilla, a corn tortilla um, with uh, carne asada or any type of steak. You know, they, they have different ones, um, pork, and, uh, and also uh, they melt the cheese on it. I know it's just amazing. The typical tacos, to be honest, you guys don't. Uh, you have to come here. You wait, just let's plan a trip. You yes. guys can can <laughs> like come it. to to Mexico <laughs> and really experience because I know in United States you guys can find some good tacos, uh, but uh, there there is nothing, nothing, nothing similar than. Than, than just the ones that you can find here, like in the corner. It's just, they're delicious. <laughs> well, this quarantine needs to hurry up and uh, be, yes. be done here. We need to get to, to Monterey. So, uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. This is a, a quick shout out to Tennille Milligan. Hopefully she's watching. I know she always watches the podcast. So, you know, future tour stop, perhaps, you know, just yes. saying. <laughs> just saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That would be amazing, you guys. Uh, actually, now that you mention it, uh, I, I have always dreamed to to make to make a tournament in my hometown, uh, part of part of a, a big tournament, you know, like uh, maybe we can talk to her and <laughs> maybe we can <laughs> we can make a stop here. Hopefully, hopefully everyone wants to come once once everything obviously it's it's <laughs> it's safe. But yeah, no, it, it it would be amazing. I'm very, we're very close to the border. You guys, you guys can drive. I, I sometimes I take the car and just go to Laredo, McAllen. It's only two hours driving, and I have driven to to Austin, where Clara lives, and it's only seven hours driving. I'm actually closer than all the than other places around you guys. So, wow, we we could try. <laughs> yeah, we we could. This this really could work out. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So we'll keep it on the theme of, of Clara. And both of you went to uh, Wichita State. You got Jazzy in the chat. She went to Wichita State as well. And uh, so we've been doing a little celebrating, of course, with college bowling this year. And we've had a lot of players from, from Wichita State on the podcast already. And we've been asking about uh, can they share or tell us a story about either Coach V or Coach L or both. So do you have any favorite stories that, that you could share uh, about the those coaches that you got a chance to uh, to spend a lot of time with? Yeah, well, the, the first thing the first thing I can say is I, I am thankful. I am thankful for them. I, I'm thankful that I was able to 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 bowl with uh, under their coaching because um, before you got, before going there, you guys, I, I only knew how to bowl left to right and hook the ball. Um, so they taught me, they, they taught me many things, obviously, and, and I became a better, a better bowler. Uh, but if I'm thinking about a story of each, each one, um, well, with Coach B, we used to have these meetings um, every week. We have to, we have to you know, uh, be with him and talk about mental game and how we can get better. And he was always helpful. And we used to read uh, books. I never read books, but uh, because of Coach B, I like to read books now. So um, we we were reading The Power of Now. That's why that's why I'm always like I actually got that very part of my life, uh, living day by day, no matter what, just enjoying the moment. Uh, so I remember we were doing the exercise of reading and, and trying to comprehend and stuff like that. And I was struggling, you know, my English. And, and, I, and when he asked me something, I was answering some other things. And he's like, I don't think you're getting it, Sandra. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I try. I try to read English. And, and it, was, it was funny in a moment. Uh, so he got me a Spanish version of The Power of Now. Uh, that meant the world to me that he wanted me to 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 understand it so he he actually got me the book in Spanish and, and obviously I, I started to understand better the the concepts that we were reading and 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 obviously that was the first year so by the time I was getting you know older uh, everything was making more sense and, and obviously uh, better with my, with the language and stuff like that but little things in the book I wasn't comprehending it so he's like here you go your Spanish book <laughs> so he he was always trying to help um, obviously the situation was never easy for me at home um, and 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 we had we had a lot of support for for you know for, for the program mm -hmm. uh, he got me he got me help with scholarships uh, and also with coach with coach Lewis um, I just I just cannot um forget that every time we were traveling um we will stop at the mcdonald's he loved mcdonald's for in the morning so we will stop in mcdonald's and get and get uh, a breakfast and i don't know just the, the experience having them as friends as well because they were our coaches but just to get to know them you know uh, it was just amazing and obviously the great experience that we had winning yeah, winning we winning the national championship in 2000, 2009. Uh, that was my second one. The the first one was two thousand six, and two thousand six I actually didn't get to ball, uh, but I was there. I experienced the the holding the cup. Uh, mm -hmm. We were I, that was my first year, so obviously I was a uh, a freshman and and I was learning and 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 I and and, and I started to to wanting to bow more. So I was practicing more and I was getting ready. So by the, by the time uh, 2009 arrived, I was, uh, I was competing. I was, I was, I was good at it. Uh, and, uh, and, and I actually got uh, MVP uh, in college, college bowler of the year that, that year. And that was the first time ever that uh, I guess a Mexican has gotten something like that, but that mm -hmm. time. Obviously now, many people are many Mexicans are bowling college and they're they're amazing. Mm -hmm. But in two thousand in two thousand nine, uh, that was the first time, and, and I just that just made me feel uh, very very happy. Uh, and we got to win uh, the national with the whole team. 
We see some familiar faces on there, including, uh, I know you were the fourth and ninth frame bowler, but your anchor that year was Rocio. And when I was going yeah. through some of the photos, when she, when we get her on the podcast, she has some great photos from that event. Uh, very intense. So what was it like, uh, you know, having her as a teammate kind of kind of in those first few years? You know, Rocio is a great friend too. Um, the last years, I haven't, I haven't. I mean, I, I see her in the field and we and we ball together, but but I'm not like always with her, so I kind of, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of miss that, right? Uh, but we used to, we used to live together in college. Uh, we were, we are, we are great friends. Uh, but she, I just love her because she will make me be explosive like because <laughs> I, I, like she will do it and and she just inspires inspires people to 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 feel it you know like to actually celebrate the shots so i think we were we were the two of all uh, um the two of us were the ones that were more like yeah you know like come on and 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 those those reactions um see seeing her um and, and, and that's what she does, like seeing her bowling every time like that, it just, look, I mean, <laughs> you can see my face there. Uh, yeah, uh, you can see Rocio with her whole heart bowling, and, and, and I just think she's amazing. She, she's amazing because at the end of the day, you guys, we do this because we love it, right? Like we love mm -hmm. to do it, and the passion, the passion that, that it goes with it, it's it's whatever we have, whatever we feel. So I just um, I love college, and obviously Rocio was was one of the best there too. And and to experience that with her and to learn uh, many things uh, together, um, obviously it's, it's it's something I I value all the time. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Aaron, we've got a few minutes left. What do you think? A couple fan questions and then uh, our final question. I think so. I like okay. the sound of that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sandra, this one is from the uh, PWBA Bowl TV chat, uh, which is a pretty cool group if, if people aren't uh, haven't checked that out on Facebook. So earlier you mentioned that the way you roll the ball isn't simple. Uh, and you can see probably the, the question at the bottom of the screen. So how much has your game changed since you became a professional or do you feel your mechanics are, are fundamentally the same? It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, well, the reason <laughs> the reason I always say that is because sometimes my hand doesn't match my speed. I have a lot of speed, you guys, and I wish my hand was more behind the ball where it needs to be. Sometimes I have it a little bit on the side, so I am trying always to ball uh, to keep it in where I want to be and when, when, when I want it to be and then allow me to match the lanes according to whatever we're bowling on. Um, and uh, I don't know, sometimes sometimes I wish I, I could throw the ball more simple uh, without, without obtaining it uh, so I can match up better. I don't know, <laughs> sometimes I feel a lot of the patterns uh, that we have to ball outside, let's say. Um, when it, well, I need to, I need to try to roll it more. And I know I can do it. I'm just, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to be silly, but like I know I can roll the ball and do things. But if I, if I really think that I want to be consistent, um, I have to, I have to try my A game, right? And that's just to hook the ball. Uh, and I've been trying to, to learn uh, better ways for me to make the bowling balls um, work for me, right? So I don't know if that makes sense, sorry. My English, it's probably not making sense, but um, but yeah, I, whatever whatever I'm trying to do with my hand, sometimes I don't get to, I, I train a lot because sometimes I don't get to feel, to feel what it is. And when I record and I see that it's on the side, where I, when I thought it was behind, so I don't know. It's just a little. Sometimes I struggle a little bit uh, with the position I want to kick, you know. Uh, and and that's why I think uh, 
it's not simple. <laughs> My game is not simple. <laughs> I, I think it's more simpler than you thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, great question I, and great answer, though. Yes, I, I, absolutely. Thank I, you. I, I think everyone understood exactly what you were talking about also. Um, Aaron, any other questions uh, that you could see? I do want to mention one comment uh, from Elsa Maria. And uh, she she typed it in Spanish, and so uh, I believe I, I used a nice Google Translate. Shout out to Google. Uh, and I, she said, very proud of all your achievements. You are a great example for all of the Mexican girls who have gone on to the United States to bowl collegiately. So, uh, and you can see yeah. it at the bottom of the screen there. That's that's exactly what it says. Uh, Elsa, mucho gusto, <clears throat> mucho gusto en saludarte. Uh, thank you for watching. And she's she's always uh, she has a daughter that she's amazing bowler in in Chihuahua and I'm, I'm always I'm always thankful for 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 them because they they always tell me you know very very nice things and 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 I try to help the youth as much as I can sometimes I'm not around because I'm traveling but uh, they know that whenever they see me they can they can just talk to me and. And I'm and I'm just trying trying my best to to help them so they especially so they know that everything is possible and if you want to be a professional you can do it um, we just have to work hard and and, and 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 train and do things to be able to accomplish whatever we want even representing our country you know so so thank you gracias thank you for for the comment and um, wishing wishing everyone. Uh, around my country and and your country and United States in the world, <laughs> they're, they're doing good. <laughs> All right, and uh, I think there's one more, Aaron. If we can get Jorge's question up, uh, let's see. Jorge said, "Sandra, your father was tagging some bowlers uh, in Mexico to comment, and you can see at the bottom of your screen there regarding bowling. So, tell us something funny or maybe a bad experience that helped you, uh, you know, kind of become the player or person that you are now." Uh, oof, I have, I mean, thank you for the question. Yeah, my, my dad is a huge fan, <clears throat> sorry, a huge fan of bowling, obviously. He was a, a, a bowler too, but, but he, <laughs> I don't know if he would understand this, but he's probably watching upstairs. Um, he, he wasn't very a good, he, he wasn't a good bowler. The good one was my mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> his, my, his style. He had a great style, but he wouldn't he wouldn't match up to the lanes. He wouldn't he wouldn't uh, strike a lot. <laughs> uh, anyways, if I want to think about one story, um, that's that's difficult. I can I can tell you. Uh, let's say let's say a um, story personally that I have in my mind that helped me be a better uh, bowler was. Actually, when I was bowling for Wichita State, and that was that was one of my first TV shows ever. Actually, that was the first TV mm -hmm. show throw, throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can tell you exactly what happened, many 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 people that know me from college knew uh, we actually lost that match and we finished second. And uh, I actually fought. I fought two times on that TV show. Um, and that experience, you guys, it's something that I will never forget because I mess up personally, right? Like I fall, so we, we just missed the chance to win. Um, we were struggling a little bit, but I guess if I wouldn't fall, maybe we, we wouldn't win, right? So, so that situation helped me be, be better, like just by that mistake. Uh, I felt awful. Obviously, I was crying on the way back. I couldn't, I couldn't understand why, like why I did that, and and I was, I was failing the team, and um, and mentally, that tough situation helped me just to grow. Um, that's why maybe when people tell tell me that I'm talented, um, it's not that I don't believe it, but I, I have the I have my feet on the floor uh, all the time, and uh, and I just consider myself very real, um, and I still think that I have to do a lot of work, 
to to get me where I want to be. But um, but I think this moment where I thought the world was ending <laughs> for me, <laughs> it just it just helped me be uh, tougher. You know, like yep. it just helped me be uh, understanding that one mistake. We're all humans. And one mistake is not uh, the end of the world, even though it feels like it. Um, it just makes you it just makes you better and just trust the process, whatever you're doing. Keep working with your coaches. Keep working hard. Uh, the results will come, you know, at some point. But just keep working hard. After that, after that moment, I I moved my feet my feet behind a little bit. I just went I just went one step. <laughs> one step longer so I wouldn't fall <laughs> <Makes sense. laughs> anywhere I went but uh no I it, it, that's just a story maybe it's not a very funny story you guys I mean for the question that that he that Jorge asked me no I, just I think that story. was good though it's no, just that... a story that that it will just always always make me make me aware like uh that you know that you can do anything after whatever tough situation and speaking to that perseverance, I believe that was in 2008 against Pikeville that those uh, particular fouls happened. And we, we showed the picture already, but this is what happens afterwards was uh, national championship. So uh, definitely a big shout out to the perseverance and learning from the moment instead of, uh, you know, letting it take you down. Yeah, uh, actually, you're right. I, I, I didn't I didn't think about it. But yeah, my 2008, when I made that terrible, terrible situation with the fouls. Uh, I, I promised myself that I was going to be better uh, for the team, for my teammates, for my coaches. And, and, and we won next year. The next year we won. And, and, I, and I had a great year um, winning the, the, the college bowler of the year and, and the MVP. I got it after that situation. So you guys, anything is possible. Um, if you think you're doing, you're not doing good in something in bowling, uh, you just have to keep tr trying, keep keep pushing, um, because when you keep pushing the doors, they start to open. So just never give up. All right, that's uh, sound advice right there. Uh, Excellent. I, I, yes. I love that part. All right, Aaron, your uh, your favorite question. I enjoy to learn in these opportunities, yes. <laughs> uh, in these quarantine times, obviously, we all have a little bit more time at home and everyone's potentially watching a little bit more TV, a few more movies. So what are the uh, Sandra Gongora uh, binge watch recommendations? Wow. Um, I love to, to watch the, the Spanish uh, series. Mm -hmm. But not but the the ones from Spain, right? Like the ones that uh, they have great stories. So obviously, um, I don't know if you if you will if if you would like to try, but I mean you can just put subtitles <laughs> and feel and feel the way and feel the way I feel when I watch a movie in English. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, these these series are amazing. I I love the the how do you I'm trying to tra to translate the the name in English. Um, ah, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, it's okay, it just tell us in mind. Spanish. Yeah. Um, el se llama. It's ah. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> oh, I, my head is is everywhere. Um, <laughs> well, let's tra let's let's do let's do the ones that let let's say the ones that I actually watch in English. So okay. I I love. Um, I finished the um, How to Get Away with Murder. Oh, I just, nice! You okay. know, I love, I love the the in, like investigating and 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 I don't want to say I love the drama, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I just love that show. Um, I also watched um, the recent one. Well, I mean, I'm telling you, I've been I've been actually busy. Like I I, I wasn't I wasn't watching a lot of TV. Uh, but I love, I love the, the for, for example, um, the office. I love the oh, office. Oh, <laughs> so does Aaron. If I want, <laughs> if I want to laugh, <laughs> if I want to laugh a lot, um, and I love, um, I don't know. Let's say I watched uh, Grey's Anatomy. Um, 
and uh, and and this is Spanish series that I don't remember the names. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, you can you can try to look for. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, no, I'm terrible, you guys. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm trying to no tra- worries. I'm trying to translate. I'm trying to translate, and it doesn't it doesn't come to. I'm getting nervous <laughs> because <laughs> I, I I don't I don't get the name. But uh, but yeah, very very nice. I mean, I think. Uh, nowadays, they are updating every time. Uh, you know, I love suits. You know, also. Oh. So, uh, so I think those are great shows, and, and they're long enough, so you guys can just get. If you haven't started, you you guys can start. I mean, there. I just I just love everything about investigating and lawyers and and you know I I don't know I just to find out more things. I think it's. You should watch Chicago I, PD. I, watch that show too. Chicago oh, okay. PD. That's 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 one for sure. Okay, I'll write it down. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Aaron, any final thoughts? Uh, I'm, you know, just uh, thankful for another great podcast here, and I'm probably going to get Chipotle tonight. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than that, Sandra, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we definitely had a blast uh, getting to catch up with you, learn a little bit more about you too. Uh, so thank you for taking some time out for us. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I know I, I even feel funny speaking English, so I'm sorry, you guys. I hope I made sense. Oh. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> no, you're great. Uh, but yeah, th- thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate what you guys do for the sport and for us every time we're bowling. Uh, you guys you guys are amazing. Uh, you, you connect people from around the world uh, when, when these moments are difficult. We can we can still we can still feel and, and be motivated uh, for our sport even though we are not doing it physically. But uh, thank you guys, I appreciate it. You're the best. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We, we appreciate you uh, joining us and sharing some time with us. I know you're busy, uh, man. It's, this has been great. I feel like uh, we learned a little bit more about you, and I think the fans really appreciate it. The viewers really appreciate it. Uh, your honesty and very candid uh, answers today. Uh, again, I want to thank Sandra Gungora. Um, coming up next on Bowl TV, folks, I want to give a shout out to our guy Daniel Farish uh, in his show Splitting Boards. He will be talking with uh, Courtney Ermish and Maddie Brandos uh, and talking about last year's uh, ITC win. Uh, so check him out. That'll be at the top of the hour on Bowl TV. Next week, uh, only one show. So please enjoy your Memorial Day. We're off on Monday. And Wednesday, we will have the legend Carolyn Doran Ballard joining us. Uh, next Wednesday, of course, uh, 2020 PWA Hall of Fame uh, inductee. So be on the lookout for that. So for Aaron Smith, Sandra Gungor, my name is Emil Williams Jr. This has been episode number 16 of the PWBA podcast right here on Bowl TV. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>